Hey everyone, it's Cam here, Senior National Training Manager at Dowd LED, and uh, today's Real to Real is going to be on light guide panels. So we're going to talk a lot about really the customization with light guide panels, how they're a little bit unique for most of our products. This is why if you go on the website, you can't just find a light guide panel, get an exact part number, right? Everything is customizable. So we can do pretty much any length, um, different shapes, even curves. Um, so we do a lot of really cool projects with this. I want to get right into it. So let's go over to the slides and we'll start talking about the higher level stuff and then we'll do a demo and, uh, and a close up. So, all right, let's get into it. As you know, real to real, right? Been one of our most popular series. Uh, these are really 15 minute deep dives into single product categories. Um, we're going to talk about light uh, panels today. You're actually going to see this product with some of that stone on it. We're even going to talk a little bit about the color changing uh, properties of our light guide panels. So let's get into golden nuggets, right? The three different light guide panels today is going to be static white. What I mean by static white, right, is just single CCTs, tunable white, and then RGB and RGBW. With our light guide panels, right, they're customizable, low profile form factors, but they're edge lit. And I'll show you in the demo what I mean by this, but back in the day, right, you had to have the tape light go through the actual panel. So the problem with that is unless you really diffused it and made the light guide panel rather large, um, you would not get good diffusion. We've been able to now do edge lighting where you take the tape light, put it into the border of the light guide panel. We use what's called an etched acrylic and then we fractal that light so it looks completely even across the entire light guide panel. And I'll show a little bit uh, closer up with that later. Um, with static white, right, those are the popular CCTs, everything down from 2400 up to 6500. We have both diffused and clear panel options, or another way of saying that is not really clear, it's more non diffused panel options. Um, and we have 12 volt and 24 volt. And then we'll talk a little bit uh, later on how big you can get these both in the US or if we have to actually manufacture overseas. Uh, warranty in diode LED fashion, right? We give you a very long non-restrictive warranty of five years with our light guide panels. Um, here's just some of the photometrics that we can offer with our light guide panels. As you can see, right, if you have one edge, edge lit, um, you're looking at around, you know, 232 to 143 lumens. That is squared though, so it's even brighter than that across the entire light guide panel all the way up to even four edges lit where you can get up to about 437 to even 733 lumens and that's actually square so you can get these very very bright if you end up doing more uh, edges lit for the most part though what is common unless you're doing a very large size is we're doing either one edge lit or two edge lit so um all right moving on here we also have a tunable white option uh, really, everything else about this light guide panel is very similar. Um, even in size, you still get the 12 or 24 volt platforms, five year warranty, right? Even the size options on how big you can go. The difference, right, is tunable white is becoming much more popular. Gone are the days where you have to try to have a homeowner or a building owner choose what CCT they want. Maybe they want 27 here. Maybe they want 3000 Kelvin over here, right? Now you can give them an option um, where you have a CCT range from 2400 all the way up to 6500 and anywhere in between the best part about tunable white versus maybe other options like warm dim is you can choose that cct range right maybe it's 2700 or 2750 and then you're still able to dim it up and down versus warm dim right you are stuck at the cct range where that dim level is right so that's the cool part about tunable white you do get more options and controllability but just note, you do need a third party control system. So you can't just have a standard Lutron dimmer on the wall controlling tunable white. You need some type of third party control system due to tunable white being three wires and not two wires. All right, moving on here. Also, we do have options in both RGB and RGBW. Later on, I'll kind of show you why I'm much more of a fan of RGBW. Obviously, you just get more options and you can mix that white in and then mix it out to be able to create maybe a, a little bit more saturated colors or bring down the white and then you have a lot more of a, a fuller and more rich color as well. Um, I will show you as well, these light guide panels for RGB and RGBW are a little bit wider, right? A little bit uh, uh, more in depth due to making sure that we have enough room for that RGB and RGBW tape light to fit in the uh, uh, actual edges. So. All right, manufacturing and behind the scenes, right? There's a few ways that you can order our light guide panels. I want to get into that. 
Um, but I also want to show you just some of the stuff that we do behind the scenes. As you know, if you've worked with us in the past and used light guide panels, right, we have two options, right? We can do the actual manufacturing here in Reno, Nevada, um, or we can actually do the design and engineering of your light guide panel, but have it manufactured overseas for larger sizes. So uh, these are uh, on the bottom left is really one of the largest light guide panels we can do, which is 94 by 54 inches. As you can see, right, this is pretty gigantic. Um, I should have had someone stand by it to give you a little bit more representation on how big this is. Uh, on the top left is even some stuff we do where we do customized signs with our light guide panels. Um, and then on the, uh, uh, on the actual right there is a really cool onyx stone. This is actually a customized light guide panel where we are working on trying to figure out ways to make light guide panels field serviceable. Um, and I'll show you a couple options later when we get into mounting how we can do that. Uh, traditionally, right, with light guide panels or anything that you're actually underlighting stone, unfortunately, if something happens to it in five to seven years, you would have to have a contractor come out, break that stone, right, take the light guide panel out, service it, and then get brand new stone. So we're working on new types of options for you that will give you better field serviceability. Here's the actual machine on the left, one of the machines that we use to actually manufacture our light guide panels. Um, it's a really cool process. If you ever come up to Reno for training, we'd love to show you around. We can actually show you how we make these uh, in-house. So, and then on the, on the uh, actual right there are just some of the options that we have that we'll take customers through, showing them the tunable white, the RGBW, different static colors, what uh, uh, non-diffuse looks like versus diffuse, right? Um, and we'll even talk about a little bit more later on doing very specialized shapes as well. So, all right, assembly options, right? This is very important. Um, I actually took snippets from the actual direct spec sheet, so we'll get into those really quick. So if you want to do made in the USA, right, the largest you can do is around 47 or 48 by 48 inches, right? So I want to make sure that's known. Obviously, if we manufacture them here, we can um, have a lot quicker lead times. So just keep that in mind. Most of the time, four by four feet, right, is sorry, four, uh, uh, 48 inches by 48 inches is enough to get the job done. Um, these panels that we actually make here are around 80 plus CRI. Um, so just keep that in mind. And we usually have the option of either one edge lit or two edges lit. We can go up to three or four edges lit, but something to note, a little tip and trick, we do never recommend doing four edges lit or three edges lit on a rectangle, only on a square. If it's a rectangle, you'll get some type of distortion of the light when you have every edge actually lit versus a square, it will look much more diffuse. So just keep that in mind when ordering. Um, here is our option for designed in the USA, right, where we actually design and do the engineering, but we have to actually manufacture it overseas. Really, this is for if you want something that's a higher CRI, so we can get up to 90 plus CRI, or you want a larger option, right? So we can do 96 or 94 by 54 inches. So you can do very, very large light guide panels. Also, just note, we do do custom jobs as well, where maybe it is much larger than that. We can actually work with you to design our light guide panels, actually butt them up together, take out the inside border, and be able to create even larger spaces uh, with our light guide panels. So that is an option as well. So um, if you're doing RGB, RGBW, or tunable white, this is also the option that you're going to have to go with. In uh, Actually, manufacturing in Reno is only for static white options. So, all right. Driver compatibility, um, I, instead of going through the actual uh, 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 specs, right, let's just take a look at them really quick. I want to just note, we obviously have a much larger um, driver compatibility than the three drivers that I'm going to show you, um, but these are really my recommendations for you, right? So we have the Omni Drive X. We've talked about this in the past. This is one of my favorite drivers. This is really the aspirin to your headache, right? It's a true universal driver. Has about 277 volts all the way down into 110 volt in. You can get this in 12 or 24 volt. It has ELV, triac, and zero to 10 volt dimming. Um, this is compatible with almost every type of dimmer out there. Um, we're constantly testing even offshoot Amazon dimmers, and this just works. So this is definitely my option for anything that is static white but not color changing. So tunable white, RGB and RGBW, you would not want to use this. We do have another option for static whites. Let's just say you don't want to have to figure out where you're going to hide that driver. We do have the Switch X. This is a dimmer and driver combination. We were the first ones to come out with this and patent it. 
So this makes the contractor's life much easier because the actual driver just fits in the gang box. Um, and then for any of those color changing options, if you want to do tunable white, RGB or RGBW, you're going to want to use a constant voltage uh, driver. And this is mainly so that this driver doesn't fight the control system. So you're actually going to dim on the control system versus the driver. This is our VLM. As you can see, it's very small form factor. Um, I love it. It just works, right? So again, just remember the VLM is for anything that is tunable white, RGB or RGBW. All right. Let's move on. Okay. So we're going to do a demo and a close up. I'm going to show some of these light guide panels with actual stone being underlit. Um, I'll kind of give you a few of my recommendations on what CCTs to use with, with different types of stone. Um, and then we'll get into insulation after that and best practices. So, all right. Moving over to the top down right. As you can see here, this is one of our diffuse panels. And then it's hard to see it over uh, the camera. I'll bring it up a little closer. This is our non-diffused option. And so I'm going to plug both of them in without actually lighting up on stone first to show you. So as you can see, right, so again, not coming over camera as well, but with the actual diffuse, you get a much more even distribution. Um, but again, it's going to bring down the lumen output a little bit versus our non-diffuse option. You're going to have much better lumen output. So we very much recommend if you're doing anything that's a thicker stone to use the non-diffuse versus the diffuse. Um, you're going to get better lumen output through that stone. So I'm going to also show you here, we have some different types of stone here. So I'm going to show you here the difference and how it will look when underlighting it. So you can see... For me, anytime there's actual texture in that stone, um, I suggest a higher CCT. Anything from 3,500 Kelvin or up, really what I would recommend is 4,000 or 5,000 CCT. Um, the reason why with that more crisp, uh, crisp white type of light, you're going to see the veining in the stone much better. It's going to make that stone pop. But as you know, there's some people that still want that warmer look. We definitely suggest doing 2,700 or 3,000 when it is a much more warmer stone as well. So anything that has amber in it, brown, different types of red, then a uh, lower CCT would be necessary and would look good. But again, our recommendation for the most part when we're working with customers to have a higher CCT. Also going to show you another piece of stone on here. Right here. Thank you. All right. I'm going to show you a stone here that is kind of cut on purpose so we can show you the difference, right? So you can see here, this stone really pops. One second here, I'm gonna turn off the other one. There you go. So you can see here, right, if I take the stone off, um, really none of that texture comes out. It almost looks too dark. And so a lot of people, right, they'll spend all of this money on these beautiful countertops, um, and then, of course, lighting is one of the last things on a job, and so they end up trying to budget down, and they don't actually backlight that stone. Notice, as the stone, right, when I pop it over, it really transforms that stone. You see all of the different textures, right? And this is why this is becoming very popular around the country, um, specifically in hospitality and high-end uh, residential. It's because you can really transform that space by just putting a simple light guide panel underneath it. All right, moving on here. I'm also going to show you and demo the actual RGB and RGBW. And I want to show you the difference on why I love RGBW versus um, RGB. So pop this on. So you notice, right, it's a little bit of a thicker panel because of that RGB and RGBW tape light in here. So show you right here. This is actually supposed to be a green, but of course, coming through video, it changes it a little bit. You can change flickering over the camera. It does not flicker in person, right? But you can change the different colors and then you can even add in white, right? And different types of white or take it out. And so for me, anytime I'm doing a deep color, I actually want to take that white out. Um, that green or that blue, when you mix white in, it definitely saturates it. Um, and it doesn't allow that blue or green or red to pop, right? But the cool thing about RGBW versus RGB is you don't have that option with RGB. Right, you do have that option with RGBW. You can mix in that white or take it out. So um, we'll move on here for the sake of time. So installation Brex practices, best practices is really simple, right? Uh, one thing that we see a lot is field serviceable drawers underneath. So imagine like a, a cutting board that you'll see 
they'll actually put that underneath the countertop and then we'll build out a light guide panel exactly to that size so that this way the stone is not actually on the light guide panel and epoxy to it. So this is a great option that we're seeing a lot right now where this way if you had to service that light guide panel, you could pull out that drawer, take out the light guide panel, service it without actually having to break the stone. Another thing to mention is anything that is not a circle, square, rectangle, or triangle, if it has any type of curvature, right, we need direct exact renderings, right, with final sign off. So we can do those curves, we have to make sure that we have those renderings to get it accurate. And then the last thing, right, request a sample ahead of time before installation. This is really great specifically with stone, right? A lot of times they'll send you samples of stone anyways. We can get you a small light guide panel, get it out there, and you can test different stones over it to see what type of CCT you want. I highly recommend this, anything with our light guide panels and also some of our other specialty products like Gray's, uh, Gray's X, right? Get that sample out ahead of time. So before we go into applications, I wanted to show you a customized light guide panel and then we'll end it with applications and be done here. So awesome, let me turn this on for you. So this was a custom light guide panel that we did for the Peppermill Hotel here. As you can see, right, we actually laser cut into it. This is where the actual sinks are gonna go. So just showing you some of the capabilities that we can do with our light guide panels. Believe it or not, this was actually pretty simple since it was just a straight rectangle. We've done things where they have a curved countertop and we will uh, get the renderings and actually cut this to size for that curved countertop. So we can do some really, really cool uh, custom jobs for you. So, all right. I know I'm a little bit over time, so let's end it here with applications. Uh, again, really with applications, right? It's countertops for the most part, right? We do have some specialized stuff that we do, for example, in hotels. Instead of having a light above the hotel room, we will actually etch out the hotel number into the light guide panel and make it the light itself. So we can do that as well. Here's another really cool job we did with a countertop. Even hospitality projects like this, right? This was a beautiful job. Um, and then something like this, right? Where we're actually having people purchase stone specifically to highlight with light, right? So this was a really cool project. Give you a little bit of the before. Here, right, they actually uh, made the different uh, borders for it, so put the stone in there. As you can see that stone, right, it's beautiful, but obviously when it's backlit, it really transforms that stone. Um, here's another project on the left where they specifically chose to build out a stone, almost like art piece, to have light guide panels underneath it, um, or this sink. And then another one as well, this was a really cool hospitality project that we did. And then the last one, we even work with companies that can do these high depth pictures and they're like these films, uh, the kind of flimsy, we can actually pop out the borders, our light guide panels are behind there, and then we'll put in these really cool high depth pictures. So we do this a lot in retail spaces, restaurants, high end residential, where they have something that they want to showcase, right? Um, we can actually do these custom jobs for them with our light guide panels behind it.